Today, we are going to take a look at Peppermint OS, a lightweight, stable, and super fast GNU slash Linux operating system. It is also one of those just works distros, so no complicated terminal based setup. We're going to have a nice, friendly GUI setup. And I've got to say, I really like the default color scheme of Peppermint. It kind of looks like the kind of desktop wallpaper that I would go out of my way to install on my system, maybe minus the branding. And of course, I really like the red color scheme. This is usually one of my favorite color schemes to set on any given OS. So on the website, we've got a handy little download button right here that takes us to the download page. That's really great, considering that on some Linux distro websites, they kind of hide away the download button from you. It's a little difficult to find on some of them. And we also have the options for direct download or a torrent download available. And they actually list the torrent option first, which I really like. I've mentioned a few times that torrents are my preferred download method for Linux distros. We don't have a selection of desktop environments though, like we do with Linux Mint, which is good and bad depending on how you look at it. It's good for newcomers to Linux because the whole concept of choosing your desktop environment can be a little bit overwhelming to them and cause some hesitation, maybe even send them back scampering to the claws of Windows where they don't really have any freedom and they don't get to choose anything. But if you're a slightly more experienced Linux user, this might be a deal breaker for you since using Peppermint OS, you're not going to get a selection of whatever desktop manager you want when you install it out of the box. However, I don't really hold this against Peppermint OS. Not having your preferred desktop environment really isn't a good reason to distro hop in my opinion, because any Linux distro can have any desktop environment installed on it, either through the package manager or by manually installing it if you know how to. So I've already got the ISO downloaded to my desktop. Let's get started with installing it in VirtualBox. So of course, the installation steps here are going to pretty much be the same as they would be if you were installing on physical hardware. You would just have to burn it to a USB disk first and then change your boot settings in your BIOS to boot from that. And when you boot from that USB, you're going to get a screen that looks similar to this. Uh, let's go ahead and do it in full screen mode. So you get the options to try Peppermint OS Live. That's pretty much what I would recommend if you're new to Linux, give it a test drive without actually installing it on your hardware first and see if it works for you. I'm gonna go ahead and install it though. And I'm using about four gigs of RAM and two CPU threads in this virtual system, by the way, to pretty much emulate a low spec system. All right, so first thing we got is our language selection. It's automatically on English, so we'll just hit continue. And it's also selected to United States English, the best kind of English. So we'll go ahead and hit continue again. And we have the option of a normal installation or a minimal installation. I'm gonna go for the normal one. We get a web browser, utilities, office software, games, and media player. Sounds about right. And I'm not gonna bother with installing the third-party software uh, for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. If you have Wi-Fi, then you might wanna do this because obviously you're not going to have working Wi-Fi if you don't do this. And it automatically has the box checked to download updates while installing, so that's pretty handy too. All right, so we'll erase the disk and install Peppermint. And choose your time zone. It's already got mine on the correct one. And then we'll set up our name for our user. 
and then we'll put in our password and you can select whether you want to log in automatically or require your password to log in. It's already defaulted to the most secure option, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And it's going to give us some information during the install. So let's see if we can get through all of this before it finishes installing to my SSD. So Peppermint is a super fast Linux operating system. It's designed to be stable and lightweight. Peppermint 10 is built with a long-term support utility, I mean long-term support code base. So it's gonna be fully supported until 2023. Peppermint, they think that we should decide. So fully functional desktop with a minimum of installed applications. Through the use of web apps. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Keep the system light. But unlike cloud-based operating systems, it doesn't limit you to web apps. So this is probably gonna be a little bit like a hybrid between Chrome OS and well, any other Linux operating system that doesn't usually have web apps in it. Because, of course, with Chrome OS, just about everything on there is a web app, but it's very low functioning when you don't have an internet connection, or at least it used to be. I, you know, to be fair, I haven't really used Chrome OS in a long time. Um, so that's going to be interesting, the whole web app thing. I want to check out what that's all about. Oh. It passed this. Ice is the key feature. Oh, okay. So they have a whole, they have a whole uh, program that's dedicated to basically facilitating these web apps. All right. So it's a site-specific browser framework that launches web apps in a single window with none of the clutter of a more traditional web browser. Oh, okay. That's going to be interesting. Peppermint settings panel. All right, so this pretty much looks like the settings panel in Linux Mint. So that doesn't really look like anything too fancy there. Meta packages, multiple applications in one package. Turn your system to a powerful office, blah, blah, blah. So it's got Google Drive and Dropbox. I guess integrated into it. I mean, I'm sure that you got to sign in with your account, but that's pretty handy. You don't have to go through all the trouble of installing Dropbox or installing Google Drive to your system, which again, that's going to be handy for new users because a lot of them are going to be using that. We got LibreOffice, GIMP, OpenShop, OpenShot, Inkscape, Blender. Wow, so they got Blender and OpenShot already installed, so they uh they got some video editing software on there these are pretty much all applications that i'm using as on my daily driver so i might even be able to use peppermint as a daily driver peppermint community yeah that's great you can ask questions there i've never been directed to the peppermint community for any Linux questions that I've had before, like I've been directed to, okay, our installation is done. I've been directed to like the Ubuntu community, which I gotta say is kind of garbage. Um, Arch Linux community and Gentoo community, which I would say are the better two ones because generally you have uh, more experienced Linux users in there. And that was a pretty fast installation too. That only took a few minutes. And it gave us some stuff to read during the installation, which, of course, that's always nice. All right, so this is our login screen and it looks just like the website. And our desktop loads pretty quickly. And yeah, I've got to say, I really like this default color scheme here. I'm really digging the red. So let's see if we can get a footprint of this system. 
I like how the terminal looks. Let's see, do we have HTOP on it? We do. So we're using about 326 megs of RAM at idle. That is really good. And yeah, I like how they have this, um, this red, blue, and green. I can't remember, is that default for LXDE? I don't know, it's been a while since I've used LXDE. That's our desktop environment, by the way, uh, which is very lightweight, but typically doesn't offer quite as many features as XFCE, which honestly is fine, since one of the main ideas behind Peppermint OS is for it to be lightweight and simple. So it definitely achieves that with LXDE, considering that most users, or at least noob computer users, don't really do much customization to their computers or their desktop environments. And LXDE actually has a smaller disk footprint than XFCE. So that's great if you're trying to breathe some new life into an old laptop or desktop or something like that. Um, especially if it only has like a 20 gigabyte hard drive. That's what my first laptop had. And now I have SD cards with, 16, with six times as much space. It's amazing how much technology changes in 10 years or so. But, you know, even though this is the, the default setup, I don't think I would really change too much here. You know, I might make this bar a little bit bigger at the bottom, but I like how this looks. So let's see, we got Firefox installed. I'm interested to find out if it's the most up-to-date Firefox. It is not. It's a much older version of Firefox, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but we can probably get that updated if we go into our updates. So yeah, we have an update manager. You would think it would have done this though, since I chose to um, install updates during the installation. All right, yeah, so we have the op an option to update to Firefox 81 and a lot of other stuff, but I'm not really gonna get into updating the system right now. What I really wanna look at is these web apps. Let's see what that's all about. So let's see, we go to Office. Okay, so these are the web apps. So we've got all of the different Microsoft Office applications. Let's see, Microsoft Word Online. I think I need an account to get into this. Hopefully not though. And yeah, so it opens it up in Firefox, but we basically have all of the additional stuff in Firefox trimmed down so we don't have like the address bar or back and forward. We don't have uh, any of our desktop add-ons, or not desktop add-ons, uh, web extensions, right? Add-ons that you would put in Firefox. And yeah, I don't have a Microsoft account. And you know what? I really don't feel like giving Bill Gates my phone number. So we're gonna, we're gonna skip out of that. But this is really handy to anybody who is using Windows that wants to transition to Linux. Because one of the things that people always complain about is the you know they are using proprietary software on windows like microsoft office and it's too hard for them to figure out how to use libreoffice well here you go you literally have a web app that you can just click on right from your start menu that takes you to office online and it loads pretty quickly i mean you know it didn't take too too long to load uh on my system you know, granted, I've got pretty fast internet, but still, this is uh, this is pretty fast, right? It would it, actually, I would say that if I had a Microsoft account, this would probably load Excel about as quickly as Excel loads on my work laptop because you know Microsoft Office is just that bloated. See so yeah, how we got Gmail as well, Google Calendar, Google Drive. Yeah, that's really handy. And so then we got Dropbox here under the internet section. Uh, let's see, we've got a BitTorrent client. Which one is this? Okay, Transmission. It's a pretty good BitTorrent client. I would have preferred QBitTorrent, but 
you know, can't, can't really have a perfect distro unless you build it yourself, right? Let's see, so games. All right, we just have pretty basic desktop games in there. Um, where is GIMP? I thought GIMP was on here. Let's see, we've got a media player. Which media player is this? X player. All right, kind of wish that they would have had MPV or VLC as the default media player there. Oh, and our file manager. So this is Nemo, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Nemo. So that's a pretty interesting pick because you don't really think of Nemo as the most lightweight file explorer, but it does have a lot of additional options to it if you compare it to something like Thunar. So the Peppermint devs, they really sort of picked and chose what options to include and which ones, or not options, which apps to include and which ones not to include as far as bloat goes, like basically choosing you know, more bloated applications where it really matters instead of going for like a bloated desktop environment, which is just eye candy at the end of the day. They try to add bloat where it's actually going to give you more function to your computing experience. The window transparency is a bit of an interesting touch. Personally, I'm not really into the window transparency, but I know a lot of people are, so kind of makes sense that they would include that. Let's see how difficult it is for me to figure out how to uh, get rid of that. Let's see, is there a main? Or you know what, I could probably do it from here, right? Let's see, preferences. Let's see, it doesn't appear to be inside of the file manager setting, but this is applying to all windows. So maybe it's actually a setting within the, um, more like within the window manager itself. Let's try this peppermint settings panel. All right, customize look and feel. Is it in here? No. Change this because I like this cursor better. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Window manager. It's got to be in here somewhere. Desktop effects. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, so let's turn all these up to opaque just because that's how I like them. All right, so that wasn't too painful to figure out how to change the transparency. Yeah, these are nice icons too, nice icons. And I know I keep saying it, but I like the color. And we're only using about seven gigs. I believe I set it up with a 30 gig uh, hard drive. So that's pretty good. If you've got a really small hard drive, old computer, Peppermint is going to fit perfectly on it. Let's poke through some more of the applications here. Oh, so we've got an advert blocker. That is pretty awesome that there's an advert blocker that's just built in. All right, so yeah, it adds stuff to the XE host file. And we can just pick a service. Um. Hmm, I'm not sure which one uBlock uses. Maybe we'll just pick all of them. <laughs> Block all of the ads. All right, so we're gonna have to test that to see if it's got ads blocked on a website. Let's just head over to YouTube and see if there are a distinct lack of ads there. Um, all right, so I got one there. 
Hmm. Not so sure how well that actually works. Because let's see, I bet if I install uBlock Origin, the ad goes away. Yeah, so the built-in ad blocker, still not as good as uBlock Origin. So from my perspective, it's going to be a little bit pointless since I'm going to be installing that anyway if I was using Peppermint. Maybe one day a built-in ad blocker will become as good as uBlock Origin. Let's check out if there's any other applications that pique our interest. Oh, there's a pinball game on here. Oh, it's actually online pinball. Okay. That's uh, that's actually kind of lame. I was hoping it would be something like Space Cadet. The go-to game whenever your internet is out, at least in the early 2000s. Let's see, are these two different software centers or maybe three different software centers? Let's see. Let's see what all of these are about. So we've got that first one. This is, uh, what software center is this? Is this like the Linux Mint software system or software center? Hmm. I don't see any reviews, so I don't think this is the same as Linux Mint Software Center. Let's see, there's other ones. There's this one, Software Manager. So maybe that's like a software updater. No, it is a different software center. This looks more like Mint's. Actually, yeah, I think this is Linux Mint Software Center. So it's got, yeah, these are literally the same reviews that are on the Linux Mint Software Center. So I think that this has two different ones. Hmm. What would the significance of that be? All right, so I just did a little bit of reading while I had the video paused. And apparently, the reason for the two software centers is this one that I have open here, you can get flat packs through. So, like, if I just look up flat pack, uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of different flat pack versions of applications that we can get, and 1300 more. And then of course, in the Linux Mint Software Center, this is where you would just install regular applications, you know, non-flatpak applications from. So that's pretty handy. You know, you've got a lot of options here as far as software goes, because you can do flat packs or you can just do regular software. Let's see, are there any other applications I missed? Um, oh, of course there's ICE. So this is pretty much what you would use for creating your own web apps. So here you would just put in the name of an application and then enter the web address. Let's actually see if we can do one in real time. Let's make a web app for YouTube. 
because that's what a lot of people are going to be using, right? So we got that. Call it YouTube. We're in the menu. Internet, sure. Select an icon. Um, let's see, are there any good icons we got here for YouTube? Uh, nah, so let's just use, let's just use that one. All right, and then you also get a choice of which browser you want it to open with. Uh, assuming that you have other browsers installed, of course, I just have Firefox installed on it right now, so that's what it's going to open with. So let's apply that. And let's see if it works. YouTube. Hey, look at that. You can just really quickly access YouTube, but of course, you're gonna get all the ads because you don't have uBlock, you don't have any extensions built into it, so probably you would get a better YouTube experience if you actually just opened it in your web browser with uBlock Origin added on. So I think that's about all to look at inside of Peppermint. I've gotta say, this is a very good distro. I could actually see myself using this on hardware. Um, very useful for anybody who's new to Linux. Uh, the web app feature and having all of the um, all the office applications and Gmail and Google Calendar, having those web apps pre-installed on the system, that's going to make it really handy to anybody who's new. So I hope you guys enjoyed this distro review. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video. Leave a comment below about anything that you enjoy about Peppermint OS or anything that I forgot to mention in this video. And be sure to share it with anybody who's interesting in trying out Linux. Bye now.